Hey there, and uh, welcome to Quad UI. So I'm going to be doing a couple of short screencasts, kind of showcasing the uh, the editor tool and the integrated framework, and how to uh, how to install that and set it up inside of your Unity project. Um, so to uh, to get things started, we'll just head over to the website to download the Unity package. So all you need to do here is just uh, go to uh, quadui.equals-equals.com, and uh, once you get there. Go ahead and click on get the beta here, and that'll uh, download the Unity package. So once that finishes downloading, um, we'll just go ahead. I've already downloaded it, so I'll just add it to my project here by going to uh, Assets and Import Package, and go to my desktop where I have it. And you see, it's about 370 kilobytes, so it's not that large, but it's still kind of big for just scripts and, and things. Um, it's because there's quite a bit here, as you can see, uh, between the editor and uh, the various classes that are, make up the framework. And there's also a, a shader attached as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and import that. And you'll see, um, once it finishes compiling here and editing everything, um, you've got uh, the editor scripts here. And uh, everything is installed in uh, plugins as far as the framework goes. And then we also have uh, the shaders added. Okay, so uh, once this is uh, once this is installed, uh, you'll notice that there's a few things that, that have been added. Uh, you can go to Window, and then Quad UI Editor here to launch the editor. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, there's also uh, the framework here is added into the components menu here, and all you need to do is go down to Quad UI, and uh, there's uh, various classes here uh, for. Uh, components and and screens and, and animations and everything and I'll and I'll cover that uh, a little bit later. Uh, so to uh, to start working with the with the editor um, we need a material which uh, currently uh, my project was pretty much bare bones when I started here so I'll need to create one. Um, I've got a, a single texture atlas here that I'll be using. Um, it's important to uh, to note that uh, when you're working with a UI uh, atlases and stuff like that. Uh, I usually work with a filter mode point and uh, set to true color or some form of uncompressed format and that's just to make sure that uh, the edges for point filtering anyway uh, remain crisp and clear and there's not uh, there's not a fuzziness or, or a blur to them that you might see with bilinear or trilinear format um, as well as uh, keeping it uncompressed to make sure that the texture appears as crisp and uh, as beautiful as it possibly can. Um, you should also, um, under advanced settings, uh, uncheck uh, generate mip maps, uh, mainly because you're not going to be using them anyway since you're going to be shooting them from uh, an orthographic camera. So there won't be any uh, distance to, uh, to trigger the mip mapping. Um, also, because uh, mip mapping is just going to generate an extra 30% to your, to your texture memory consumption. So there's, there's no reason to, to eat up that memory if, you, if you're not going to use it anyway. So I'll go ahead here and I'll uh, create a new material. And I'm just going to call it uh, UI. Uh, for the shader, I'm going to uh, select a quad UI uh, 2D backface cult. Uh, I'll, I'll stay away from the editor one. That's uh, just something that I use inside of, of the editor tool uh, to get uh, to get the lines for the rectangles drawn. Uh, so 2D backface cull here is just a, a pretty simple unlit shader and let's just assign a texture to it real fast. And you'll see that uh, it uses alpha but it uh, doesn't use any lights and it also ignores projectors and it also doesn't uh, Z test which uh, we won't really need it to so that's just a bit of an optimization here since we're shooting everything uh, 2D wise anyway. Uh, Z testing doesn't really uh, need to occur. So I guess the uh, the best part uh, to uh, to start here is just uh, showing you uh, how to work inside the editor and, and just kind of like show it in action to uh, kind of cover all the, the features here. Uh, so uh, here we are inside of the editor. And uh, you'll notice up here at the, at the top we've got uh, three different modes here. We've got quad creation mode, uh, camera mode, and uh, the editor settings. Um, so uh, as I'm working I'll kind of cover uh, what goes on in these. But, um, We'll start with uh, we'll start with quad uh, creation, and we want to just assign uh, that material that we just created to it. And there we are. And uh, you'll notice here that uh, the texture being drawn um, 
it looks uh, exactly the way that it's drawn here inside of the inspector. Uh, so if you're working with something that has a lot of alpha, uh, like this texture does, uh, you'll see that it's just a bunch of white space and, and you can't really see what's going on, a bunch of blocks where the letters should be. Uh, you can switch to alpha mode here and you can view the alpha channel and kind of rope off everything and get everything exactly the way that you want it to. So uh, I'm going to start here and I guess I'll just start with uh, generating some quads and uh, I guess I'll start with making a logo. So I'll just uh, rope off this little area here. Uh, so here in the quad generation uh, sort of panel, um, you, you set the name for the quad that you want to generate. Uh, you can set its pivot point, be it center or top left or whatever. And this is uh, going to show where uh, your rotation. So if you set a top left and you rotate the object, it's going to rotate from its top left corner. Um, the layer here is the is the layer that uh, is going to be used for camera culling as well as uh, doing the uh, the physics calculations for the for the ray casting for mouse and uh, touch input interaction. So I'm going to set that to uh, UI, and then we have this uh, this area here where uh, you select a class. Now it's kind of important to note um, if you keep it on none, then it's not going to tie into the framework at all. It'll still uh, generate your quad and it'll generate a helper class that allows you to interact with the quad um, a lot easier but if you uh, f for all extensive purposes of the uh, the tutorial I'm going to uh, select static here since it's just going to be a static logo and that's going to tie everything into the framework so I can uh, kind of cover how that works so I'm going to start uh, just kind of drawing quads here and uh, if you just click inside of the canvas and just drag you just drag out uh, you can drag anyway uh, to start roping off uh, sections. Uh, you can also uh, use the uh, the grid snapping. Uh, the grid is uh, completely resizable and toggleable, so if you don't want to see the grid there, you don't have to have it there. And you can also make it as big or as small as you want, to uh, depending on how you've set your your increments up. So let's go ahead and just uh, we'll make this logo here up in the uh, the top corner. Uh, you can click in here to zoom in, and uh, Quad UI currently supports uh, anywhere from uh, one times, which is actual pixel uh, pixels, uh, to uh, four times zoom, uh, which I'm currently at. So you can uh, get in pretty close and make sure that you're not getting any uh, extra pixel bleed, or you're chopping off a shadow or something uh, that might be very light, but you you might notice. So you can get absolute pixel precision uh, for your UV maps here when you're generating your quad. So I'll just rope this off. And if you notice down in the uh, the left corner of the uh, the editor window, you'll see that it's actually tracking uh, the mouse coordinates in local space. Uh, so you can also see exactly where you are. Uh, kind of helpful. So I'll just rope that off, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you want to, you can actually uh, type in stuff here and change your location or your width and height to your quad too, um, if you know exactly how big it is. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that, so I'll just go ahead and uh, bake it. And when I hit bake, it's going to generate two things. It's going to generate a mesh in a .obj format, and it's also going to generate a prefab. And you uh, get to choose where those prefabs and models get generated simply by uh, plugging in the path right here, uh, including the entire path from your assets folder down uh, for both mesh and prefab.